lot of musicians are worried about how AI is going to change the business of music production or scoring for film and media, which is completely understandable because uncertainty is scary by nature and no one really knows what the future holds for creatives. No one really can say with any degree of certainty what our relationship with these rapidly developing tools will be. I've purposely avoided discussing AI on this channel up until this point because while I have my own personal opinions about where the industry and composers like me are gonna be in the coming years, they're just that, one person's opinion. And to be honest, they're actually pretty optimistic, my thoughts about AI and the future of our field. I think there's a lot of positive and exciting things being developed. And and that's what this video is about today because I discovered this AI tool that's still in the early stages, but I feel it's actually usable for making music, especially for modern composers. And that tool is from one of my all-time favorite companies called Output. Per usual, I've got no endorsement for this product and I have no relationship to the company. I just heard about Output's first entry into the world of AI over the weekend and it's honestly really cool and it gives anybody who likes to create music with unique, interesting, and sometimes like really strange sounds a lot to be excited about. So the platform is called Co-Producer and I was playing around with it all weekend and what this video is gonna do is I'm gonna talk about what the platform is, why I really like it, and then the most important thing is I'm gonna show you how I specifically like to use it to add to my sound arsenal and how I find new and unexpected samples and sounds to use when scoring for major films and series with it, or just basically producing music in general. Again, this is something that's in the earlier stages, but I think it's really, really promising and really cool. And I've actually already made a handful of contact instruments out of the sounds that I've gotten there for my own work. Before we get started though, if you could just do me a quick favor, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please just tap the subscribe button because doing so allows me to continue putting out free content for composers and musicians just like this and it allows me to continue creating the resources that I do on modernmediacomposer.com which is my educational platform for composers and musicians. I really appreciate it. With all of that out of the way, I'm so excited to explore how to integrate this really cool AI platform co-producer into your composition process, so let's dive in. The first thing that we're gonna answer is simply, what is Co-Producer by Output? Basically, this is a sample pack generator that uses AI prompts to generate four sample packs at a time based on the text that you enter. If you're not familiar with what sample packs are, I have an entire video dedicated to that on this channel. I'll add it at the end of this video. When you download the sample packs that Co-Producer generates, they're super well organized, just like any pack that you'd buy from a known product. So for example, sample are organized into folders based on their instrument category. So as you can see here for this sample pack, it split things into ambient textures, bass synthesizers, dark pads, drones, and it just keeps going. Every individual sound has its own organized folder, which I really, really appreciate. Another thing I really love about this tool is it is completely artist focused, meaning that it's not meant to replace you. It's meant to empower you as a musician and creator. And the most amazing part is at least right now, at the time of this recording, Co-Producer's AI sample pack generator is totally free. So there's no reason not to be experimenting and using this tool, testing it out. And again, this company has no clue who I am. I have no endorsement. I just want you guys to know about the most practical tools that are fun and inspiring to use and that can be helpful to you. So if you've seen my other videos, you know that sample packs are a big part of my composing process. I love to use WAV files to create my own contact instruments, or I just drop them into my compositions to work more efficiently. I really love this tool. It's super simple to use and so for the rest of this video Let's just play around together enter some prompts in and I'm gonna show you how I then take those sounds Make them my own or basically how I take things a step further after I get the free sounds So let's go into the sequencer and start playing around So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go to the website for this which is coproducer.output.com I've already made an account so you can learn more about it here There's a nice introduction from the owner of output, but we're just gonna start creating so I'm gonna click here and this is where you're gonna enter just a text prompt and they give you some examples. So they say, pretty piano, soft drums, and ambient strings at 80 BPM in the key of E minor. And that's something else I'll point out is that when you get these samples, if you look at the sample packs, if I go into dark drones here, it gives you the BPM that the sample has been published in. It gives you the key. And so everything is really organized the same way it would be for when you buy a sample pack from Big Fish Audio or Infinity Samples or any place like that. So for here, I've actually already gotten some 
some prompts that I would like to try using. The first one I'm gonna do here is say organic strings that are raw, gritty, and remind you of the Wild West. The last show I did, it was a Western, so I'm still kind of like in that world. I still have uh, a lot of sounds that I'd love to add to my arsenal like that. So let's see what they come up with. I'm gonna say generate four new packs, and then it's gonna analyze the prompt. It'll just take a second and we'll be able to listen back to it. So as you can see, now we have four sample packs. So let me just try these out and see what it came up with. All right, so that's pretty cool. I like that. I really like that sort of arpeggiated um, string part there. I think it sounds really awesome. I would definitely be able to use it. So I'm gonna download that sample pack. Those sort of trembly string textures, I like that, so I'm gonna download that. Let's check out sample pack three. That one's okay. I don't really know what I'm gonna use that for, so I'll skip it. So again, just like the other sound, what I really like is that sort of picking guitar thing. I don't like that sort of ambient horn that's over it, so all I need to do is I'll download that sample pack and then I'll have access to the sound that I really like. And that's mine forever now. I can use that in uh, you know whatever projects as part of a larger composition, of course. I'm not allowed to you know take that sound and go off and sell it or anything. That's not what's gonna be allowed with this license. But you can use it as part of a larger composition for yourself so that it you know adds inspiration to whatever you're writing and it could be really useful like that. Let's try a different prompt. So I'm gonna say aggressive industrial kick drum that is distorted and sounds gnarly. That just sounds like it'd be right up my alley. Let's see what that is gonna sound like. That's kind of cool. I actually kind of like that kick drum. Let's keep listening. That's a cool riser. I'm going to download that. Alright, so now we're getting into some really cool territory. I feel that this prompt worked really well. These are just sounds that kind of appeal to my style of music and film scoring and stuff where they're very sort of Trent reznor -y and very sort of like industrial and heavy. I think it's really cool. I love it. It's great. It's dirty. It sounds terrible to a degree, which is perfect for what I like to do with music, so. That one's a little more techno-y. I think it's really cool. So you are gonna be downloaded too. I have no clue where I'm gonna use that, but I like it, so I'm gonna just take it so it doesn't get lost in this void, because once you search for something new, I have no idea if I'll ever find that again. So that's part of the fun of this. It makes things like really inspiring, really exciting. Let's try another prompt. Let's try this, let's try strange synthesizer sounds that are psychological and unnerving. And what made me come up with that prompt, basically, that's just what I look for when I'm looking for my own sounds for scoring a TV show, or honestly, sometimes making my own music. I just like things that are dark and tense and cool like that. All right, cool, I like that synth percussion. That's pretty interesting on its own, honestly. Um...
All right, we'll do one more, and then we're going to bring it into the sequencer and start playing around with all these free sounds we just got. I love distorted, violent-sounding drums. Let's do that. That's pretty dope, I'll take it. All right, so I've got my sample packs now that I downloaded using Co-Producer's uh, text prompt AI. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna kind of like bring them into the sequencer. I'm going to just try and experiment with them, see what sounds I can maybe turn into my own instrument, what sounds that I can just use as wave files that sound kind of cool. Let's listen to, for example, this sound right here. So that is right up my alley personally. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to drag that in to a uh, contact and I'm gonna make a pad out of it. Let me show you how I'm gonna do that. So here's contact. I'm just gonna take that wave file right here and I'm going to literally drag it in. And as you can see, if you go into your mapping editor, that's gonna stretch it all the way across the keyboard. So if I go to my middle C, you can hear the sound that we had just heard before, but I can also go an octave below that, or even further. But what I'm gonna do with it then is to turn it into a pad, I'm just gonna adjust the attack. I'm gonna adjust the release a little bit. I'm gonna add over here, I'm gonna add a filter. So I'm gonna add a low pass. I just like this low pass filter too. And I'm gonna right click on this cutoff section. I'm gonna say learn MIDI CC automation. And when it does that, I'm just gonna move my MIDI CC1 knob. And so now, I can control the filter. Let's just take things a little bit further. I'm going to add some reverb to the track. Let's add a little bit of, I don't know, let's just add a little distortion or something. Again, I'm just kind of doing this really quickly to demonstrate how far you can just take a single sound that you get from these sound packs that you're getting from Co-Producer, right? So now let's just check this out. Let's see how we can play this. So it's not bad. There's a lot more tweaking that we can do to make it like really kind of cool and gnarly in our own. You can also like something that I can tell that I'm gonna like to do with this right away. Put everything up to 11. If I just play with the pitch wheel like that, I could tell I'm gonna be able to get a lot of good uses out of that as a single scoring tool. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is let's try adding a BPM synced sample from the packs into here and we'll see what we can create with that. All right, so here's a sound that came in one of them. It's under the pulsing bass synth folder. That's kind of cool. Let's just drag it in and see what happens when we spread it across the keyboard. So I'm gonna drop this into contact. I'm gonna press on this little wrench and then I'm gonna open up the mapping editor and the wave editor. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for what key is this in? Well, this is in D. So I'm gonna make sure that this gold little key here goes to D. And then I'm gonna add a loop just like that. And I'm gonna choose either Time Machine or Beat Machine. Basically, Time Machine is going to sync it to your tempo by either stretching or condensing the wave file. And Beat Machine is actually going to sort of skip. It's a little more percussive of a option. And so you just gotta hear which one works best for your sample. In this case, let's just start with Time Machine. So now that's gonna sync everything. Let's put on the BPM here. Cool, so we can hear that it is in sync. Now let's see what happens. What happens if we uh, play it down here? So that's actually kind of cool, a little bit lower like that. What if we add a uh, thermal, which is also from output? What if we put that on there? I kind of like that one. It's a preset in here called Angry Doberman. <laughs> Someone's definitely having fun when uh, naming these presets here, so that's kind of cool. So if I was scoring with this, I'd probably put a filter on it like this. 
and that makes for kind of a more interesting and evolving sound. Let's do another one. Let's add another track in here and see what we can come up with. Another loop called Twizzler Rhythmic Swell. I think this is going to be really cool. On this one, instead of using Time Machine, I'm going to use Beat Machine to tempo sync it. This is what it's going to sound like. All right, so what if I play it now all the way down here? That's a really good pedal that I can definitely use on a series or a film or something when we're trying to sort of create movement and pacing, but maybe there's some dialogue or maybe things are just starting to amp up in a scene. It's definitely gonna be effective. What does it sound like when we play it up here? So it's in its infancy, but I think it's really cool. I feel it shows that AI has the potential to offer a lot for composers. I'll honestly take anything that helps me make my workflow more efficient and my music sound more interesting. I believe this tool has potential to do that. And again, this is just a beta version, so there's a lot more to come. I also think that we're gonna see a lot more from other companies like Output that will be releasing products that can help us do what we do as humans, which is tell stories and create content that connects with other people people on a personal and emotional level. If you haven't yet tapped the subscribe button, I hope that you will. It's an enormous help to the channel and I'm really excited about all of the upcoming content and resources that we have to share in the coming weeks and months. Also, don't forget to check out modernmediacomposer.com where we have more resources including free instruments and premium courses for composers. I thank you for watching and as always, I hope this was helpful.